Welcome to the Vine Resources Podcast Show with your host, David Lawrence. Welcome to another edition of the Vine Resources Podcast Show. I'm absolutely delighted today to have with us Elizabeth Farley. Elizabeth is the CEO of Tech Hub in London. Thanks, Elizabeth, for joining me. Nice to be here. Thank you. Uh, we're just right at the start of the new year, the new decade. Um, Elizabeth, why don't you share with our listeners a little bit about uh, who you are and what Tech Hub is, please? Sure. So uh, I um, I founded Tech Hub uh, oh, 11 and a half years ago now. Um, and really, it was uh, it was wanting to create a place where everybody in the uh, startup tech industry could come together in London. Uh, there were various things going on, uh, different meetups, that sort of thing. But there wasn't a really uh, central place where where people could work and meet and um, uh, and, and attend events uh, all in the one place. And so that's how Tech Hub was born. Um, and we have we have grown since then, since uh, since very humble beginnings uh, in a very scrappy startup space, um, to uh, to 400 companies in London and then more uh, across Europe as well. And really, it's about providing access to all of the things uh, that technology uh, entrepreneurs and companies need in order to be more successful. So that's um, space to work, to bring their teams together, programming to support uh, them individually and as a company. Uh, we can bring investors in. You can come and meet investors every single week uh, at Tech Hub. Uh, and and we bring in access to uh, contacts, opportunities. Uh, it might be a, a corporate client that you're you're finding it really difficult to get hold of. Um, uh, the team and, and the network here can help you access that. So it's it's a great opportunity for entrepreneurs and startup teams to support each other uh, and for tech hub to support them as well. Fantastic. And and are you able to share perhaps some of the success stories that you've had over the years and some of the well, either the ups or the downs, but particularly the, the successes that you've had and, the, and perhaps the, the companies that you've helped? Yeah, so we, we've we had, um, we've seen some great successes uh, from our companies and I, I always feel uh, just so proud because we're the ones who see them beavering away every day, you know, yeah. in late at night, that sort of thing. Um, and so we've, um, our, our companies have raised over a billion dollars in funding. Uh, they've exited to tech giants like Google and Microsoft and Twitter and Facebook and Oracle and uh, Airbnb and so many others. Uh, and so we uh, we had um, uh, Nexmo. Uh, they sold to Vonage, a uh, boy company in uh, in the US. Uh, we had Divide, who sold to to Google. Um, we, we've just had so many different companies uh, just do incredibly well. Um, exiting to other companies and, and or going on going on to to do more. Uh, relatively recently, we had. Um, Call sign who had been with us uh, since they were, I think, two or three people uh, after four years raising their 36 million uh, Series A, which is a which is a great Series A um, uh, for for the London uh, industry. And we, you know, we watched them go from a couple of a couple of people to you know to to 50 people and and then beyond. And so that kind of that kind of closeness to companies as they're being built, as they're growing, going through those growing pains is, is it's really amazing. You know, we've had a tiny part in their success, but it, it still feels like um, like our success as well as theirs. Well, you've obviously got a good um, a good overview of what's going on in in the market and the companies that join you. Is, is there anything you can share with any listeners who are perhaps going up, for, thinking of going through a startup phase or thinking about starting their own business? What are, what are the what are the traits that you've seen some of these successful uh, entrepreneurs and and uh, and owners of businesses that have come through your door? What are some of the things that you've seen that that's made them successful? Uh, I think um, self belief is incredibly important. Uh, you know, it's always important to uh, get advice from others, uh, you know, to take that on board. But at the end of the day, it's you who's putting in this time and this risk and all of this energy. And so believing in yourself, believing that your decisions uh, are the right ones, um, that, that what you want to put out into the world um, is is valuable and worth your time. That's incredibly important. Um, but I think one of the, the biggest things that I see from successful uh, founders is their ability to hire you know as everybody says all business is people um, and we think of technology companies as technology uh, 
but actually, like every other company, what what these companies are is people. Uh, people make the technology, people use it, people test it. Um, and being great at, at hiring um, is absolutely essential. And it's one of those things that when you're a new entrepreneur, you might not have done before. And it's, it's one of the things that I think people need uh, the most support with. Uh, one of the things that, that I found particularly challenging myself uh, that I had to learn was um, how to how to be able to let go and fire people quickly if they weren't working out. I think uh, when you're an entrepreneur, you you always seek to try and fix things. You know, you, you sort of put more energy in and, and and try something different and you know and try this out. Um, but at the end of the day, if something isn't working out, it's you know it's nobody's fault. It's just that you're not right for them. They're not right for you. Um, and so learning to to, to go through that whole hiring and, and firing process um, is really, really essential. And people who do that really well succeed incredibly well. That's really uh, great insight. Thanks thanks for sharing that. <laughs> and, and, and look, I'm going to jump into the questions now. Um, yeah. Tell us what now, and especially as it's evolved over time, what does a, what's a typical day in the business look like for you? Me personally? Mm. Um Oh, gosh, I'm sure every single person you ask this question of uh, says there is no typical day. Um, so I'm going to, you know, pretend that, uh, that, that, that that's not a thing. Um, it's, uh, you know, t today is a great example. Um, uh, spending time uh, with the team uh, in our, our, our team meeting that we have every week. Um, it's, it's one of the things that I enjoy most about my week when everybody comes together um, and we run through um, where everybody's at, what they have coming up this week, what they're working on, what they need help with. Um, so that's, that's sort of a, a really good uh, insight into what my day is mostly about because it is, uh, you know, as a CEO, I think really you're there as um, almost as a, as, as a sort of a, a friend uh, in the business. You're not necessarily uh, managing uh, all of the, the people in the team, but you're there to support them with, you know, what do you need? What do you need support with? I, I always think that the CEO's role is actually a support role uh, because your position is to make sure that everybody has the things that they need to be able to do their role. Um, and so, uh, you know, I might be having a, a, a finance meeting uh, as, I, as I did today, uh, again, just sort of a catch up uh, on, on where things are, uh, a quick sales meeting, we've brought on some, some new team members. Uh, and so we're sort of getting everybody uh, together to talk about sales strategy, uh, which is always really nice when, when you can have that in a, in a really collaborative uh, environment, everybody supporting each other to, to work out how we can do our roles better. And so, so that, was, uh, that was great. And I think, you know, those things are, are really what my day is all about. Also contracts. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I am the person in the company who deals with all of our, uh, our contracts because for my sins, uh, I'm particularly good at it. So there's, there's a typical day we'll often have someone sticking something in front of me saying, can you read through this incredibly dense thing and tell me that we can sign it, <laughs> which is possibly my least favourite part of my job. But but equally very, very important as well. Um, who's who's had an impact on you as a leader and who, who perhaps uh, uh, have you looked up to and perhaps um, helped you on your journey? And can you tell us why? That's a, it, it's interesting. Um I, I think that one of the people that's actually um, taught me a lot uh, is, uh, is Andrew Tibbetts, who's my COO. Um, he uh, showed me a really different way of uh, managing people um, in, in uh, understanding some of the things uh, that people need um, that is, that's very different to how I am. Uh, as a person, so for example, I can, uh, you know, deal with a lot of um, uncertainty. I, you know, I don't need to know uh, what the path is going to be for me or, or the company. You know, I'm I'm an entrepreneur. I sort of, you know, we work that out as we go along. But um, he really taught me about how um, other people. Uh, need those things, and other people need to hear different things, and other people need um, to, you know 
need to have uh, have a clearer understanding of, of sort of the, their path and their direction, and and that they need certainty and things like that. And so he's it, it's it's always interesting when people ask you about leadership, um, and I suppose technically what I'm talking about is is management, but just sort of um, that understanding that. Um, that that people need uh, different things that I might not understand has been hugely helpful for me uh, broadly uh, in being a leader. Um, I think, uh, gosh, there there are so many amazing people out there who who really forge their own path uh, as 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 a leader, and I think there are some incredible. Uh, people in the industry, people like um, uh, Sherry Kutu, uh, the, the super angel investor, she's incredibly inspiring in terms of how she's able to lead a number of different things without being uh, in the wall uh, full time. Mm -hmm. And for me, I find that ability to not get bogged down and be able to to remember that uh, your role is the big picture always, even when you want to get down into the weeds and down into the details. That stuff is important too. But seeing people uh, like her manage to achieve so much uh, and be so passionate about it, um, I find that incredibly inspiring. What are you doing or what have you done oh. from the top within your company to really keep your employees engaged? I think uh, for me, it's about um, being authentic um, as, as a person and as a leader. That's very important to me. Uh, and I think that it's really important to uh, people who work in my team and, and, and to lots of people who, who work in teams, um, particularly when they go to work for a small company, a startup. Um, they want to be part of something where they're not just um, a faceless cog in a large machine. And for me, that's about bringing who I am to work. Uh, if, if I come to work in a mask, then I'm not giving anybody else permission to come to work without a mask on. And so I think that... Um, I think that that really uh, increases um, engagement because people understand that they're they're working with you to deliver something that's real because because you're real and because you're uh, genuine and open about your vision for the company and about who you are as a person. You, you might have a better insight than than most on this. Um, what what do you perhaps see as the biggest challenge facing? business leaders right now today oh that's it's it's a tricky one um i think i think for um for small companies it's uh it's the same thing as always it's um it, it's people and money they're, they're the they're the two most important things um to Particularly to to early stage businesses, well, to all businesses really, but they're they're the things that um, you know can really keep you on a knife edge as a as a small company, as an early stage company. Um, I think for larger companies and and for big brands, it's about working out how to innovate differently uh, in this era where there's so much innovation uh, and from from very early stage. Uh, companies where um, your customers can know so much more about you as a company, they can can talk to each other, they can talk about the issues all the time. We, we work with um, uh, with corporates, with with brands and large companies to help them uh, uh, innovate better, to help them uh, work with startups rather than seeing them as a uh, as, as a terrifying you know potential disruption that might bring them down. Because I think that it's it's a great way for um, larger companies and established companies to capitalise on on the situation that we're we're all now in, where, which is really really different to you know to twenty years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I think uh, I think knowing how to 
uh, innovate quickly and inexpensively, which is one of the biggest challenges for large uh, companies and brands, um, is one of the things that, that, you know, that we help them with at, at Tech Hub, but it's one of the things that they really need to um, invest uh, energy and uh, and resources in, uh, not just you know talking heads at the top of the company mm -hmm. and then the small <clears throat> innovation team sitting over in an office somewhere. They really need to be able to um, to you know to capitalize on this and uh, you know push their innovation forward in a really different way. What what's the one piece of business advice you, the, the best piece that you've ever received that you can share with us? For me, it's uh, to go with your gut because I always think that um, kicking yourself for making the wrong decision, oh, I, you know, I made the wrong call on that, um, feels bad. Kicking yourself because you made the right decision, second-guessed yourself and then made the wrong decision feels so much worse. And so I think um, people who've said, you know what, if this is what you really feel, you need to you need to go with it. Uh, I think it's it's absolutely the best piece of advice that I've received. Every time I've gone against it, I have regretted it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> what, what's it? What's exciting you in the industry right now that, that you can see? I am. I love that there is so much more um, effort and attention and interest going into healthcare and technology. Uh, health tech companies uh, are really growing, they're really booming, there's a lot more interest in it. For me, uh, I always thought that um, the really exciting thing uh, about technology, the exciting thing about big data was that it was going to transform our lives in terms of health and well-being. And that hasn't quite happened yet because it's been difficult to join things up. Obviously, when you're dealing with the National Health Service, um, you know, with a lot of legacy systems and that sort of thing, it, you know, it, it's going to be um, challenging. But I think that we're seeing some really, really exciting companies uh, really pushing forward with different ways of doing things and ultimately things that are going to affect people's health and, and increase their well-being. I mean, that's that's the ball game, isn't it? That's, that's really the most important thing um, that we have in our lives. And so that's something that I'm really, really uh, excited about. Um, I'm also really pleased to see that so many more people are paying much more attention to inclusion um, and diversity uh, in the industry. You know, we, we've been having conversations uh, about these things. I mean, I've been having conversations about women in tech for the last 20 years that are exactly the same conversations, which is really frustrating. Um, but more and more people are saying, wait, I want to take action. Uh, to change this. You know, we, we've done the same thing uh, with the Tech Hub Accelerate program, which is um, a, uh, a cohort of uh, underrepresented founders in technology um, where their places at Tech Hub for a whole year um, and the support that they're receiving um, are funded by um, uh, corporates and brands um, that want to support diversity, want to, to support startups. And it's it's just been so incredibly encouraging that every time we've had a conversation with someone about this, they're, they're oh, of course, of course, I'd love to support something like that. Of course, I want to see more people of colour, more disabled people, more women uh, yeah. in the technology industry. Of course, we want to see them to do, we want to see them be more successful. Um, and, it, you know, it's not just tech hub that's taking these kinds of actions. A lot more people are paying attention to the fact that this is absolutely essential uh, for business, not just the right thing to do, but it's absolutely essential for business. Let's just talk about well-being. What, what are perhaps the things that you're doing or even perhaps around your ecosystem that you that, that that's helps helps your employees with their, with their well-being in general? What, what are you seeing that's being done now? What are you doing? Uh, uh, something that I've noticed over the last 10 years um, of Tech Hub has been uh, how many fewer people are here past 6.30 p.m. in the evening. Mm. And that actually, I, I find that hugely encouraging. I think there was uh, this real badge of honour about working all of the hours all of the time. And when you're starting a business, 
there is often a necessity and a drive to, you know, you, you work a lot, you're, it's, suddenly you look up and the whole day is gone and um, that's just how it is sometimes. Um, but I'm finding that both for our team um, and for the teams of the companies that are based at Tech Hub, people are going home earlier. You know, people aren't working weekends uh, as much uh, as they used to. And I think that's probably the number one thing that you can do as a, as a general uh, well-being tool is to allow people more time, more, more time with their families or their friends or, you know, the, the things that they want to do, more sleep. Uh, is incredibly important. And I know this seems like, I think people expect me to say, ah, oh, this this incredible app has come out and it's been, you know, uh, made a huge change. But I think something as simple as the expectation changing uh, around working hours um, is hugely, hugely beneficial. Mm. That's great. Great. Thanks for sharing that. It's really interesting. And if, if, there, um, if there was a story perhaps from your childhood or, or a memory from your childhood that influenced your work ethic in later life. Can you think of one? Is there something you can share? Oh, um, I have to have a think about that. I'm Australian and as everybody knows, we have an incredible work ethic. So um, I, I have that going for me already. Um, I think um, my, my father uh, was a business owner and he um, ran shoe stores. He owned and, and ran shoe stores, which was, was my first job when I was very young, was helping him out on a Saturday uh, doing that. And I think um, for me, understanding that the doors had to be open and the, you know, people would be coming in on a Saturday and so he just had to be there. And I think, you know, that idea that, um, you know, people are coming to you because they need something. They they need you. They need what you're offering, and you just need to you need to be there. You need to make it happen, make it work, keep the doors open. I'm just in this moment with you asking that question, seeing the parallels uh, between his business and my business in terms of the lights need to be on and the doors need to be open. Um, but I think that 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 was a really useful message for me about you know that the show must go on. What um. What do you think your industry is going to look like in in three to five years time, and and how do how do you think that might influence yours or perhaps even your 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 um your your ecosystems, the people that will come in with you? How might it affect their business models? How how do you see things changing? Um, everybody's still you know very excited about AI and what that is going to mean uh, for. Uh, business uh, and for, for jobs in the future. Um, we we are seeing more things, in, particularly in my industry, um, more uh, basic coding being um, you know completed by machines. Uh, and I think what we're going to see is a movement towards more of more of that, more more basic functions, more um, code uh, being done. Uh, by AI, um, uh, you know, and, and through machine learning and, and all of those things. Um, and what we're going to see is the opportunity for uh, peoples, for, hum for, for human brains to be able to stretch themselves, uh, to be able to think bigger because um, some of that low-level um you know, technological work uh, is being done by machines. And so I think that that's actually a great opportunity for uh, people to innovate and to develop uh, much more complex or far-reaching products uh, much more quickly uh, and uh, at an earlier stage of their business. And so I think that's a very exciting proposition uh, because it doesn't mean that technology jobs, that coding jobs are going to go away. It just means that um, they'll be able to be more advanced. They'll be able to do more uh, through that. And so I think that in five years' time, it's going to look very interesting in terms of what a person just getting started uh, will be able to achieve. And that, you know, that's really exciting because we get these great leaps in innovation 
from individuals who have vision that is different to what's out there at the moment. And that's thrilling. If you if you had your time again uh, and were given your 20 year old self one piece of advice, Elizabeth, what, what would you say to yourself now looking back? I I would give myself permission uh, to start a business uh, to, to sort of, you know, do something myself to to recognize that I could do things uh, just on my own. I could just start something uh, on my own. I think I didn't really learn that uh, quite, despite the fact that, that my father ran a business. I didn't quite learn that until later on. I was, you know, still thinking about um, university and, and, and what, what job I would have after that, that sort of thing. And so I think I would be saying, hey, you know the way that you did a lemonade stand when you were a kid. You know the way that you uh, went around to neighbours' houses and picked up all the flowers off they, from the garden, the ones that had fallen off, not not picking from their, yeah. their garden, and then sold them to other neighbours when you were, you know, eight years old and things like that. That is who you are, coming up with ways of doing things and, and spotting gaps and, and looking for opportunities. You can, you can do just, you, you can do that um, as, as your career. Uh, I think I wish I'd known that a little bit sooner. Fantastic. Well, hopefully someone's going to heed that advice and, and maybe it'll he help them in the future. <laughs> Elizabeth, <laughs> thank, so. <laughs> thanks so much for joining me. Um, if people want to reach out to you, connect with you, find out more about the Tech Hub, uh, what's the best way they can do that? Uh, the You can go to www.techhub.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at evarley uh, and you can find me on linkedin drop me a message elizabeth thanks so much for joining us thank you it's been great we really hope you enjoyed the podcast today if you want to listen to more exclusive tips and life lessons from our guest go to the resources page at vineresources.com 